For example, in, in trucking, uh, the, the reptile attack is very um, uh, prevalent in trucking where you get a truck driver or a, a safety director and you question them from the plaintiff's perspective and you lock them into a, an inflexible position that uh, well exceeds the actual standards that they're legally required to do. So for example, a driver would be asked, uh, so you know, Mr. Jones, as, as a truck dr driver, you'd agree with me uh, you have a duty and responsibility to keep the other drivers around you safe at all times, correct? And the truck driver who doesn't have the special neurocognitive training is going to automatically say yes to that. And then the next question is, because if you drive in a way that needlessly endangers other drivers, or if you expose other drivers to unnecessary risks, that would make you an incompetent driver. That would make you an unsafe driver, wouldn't it? And every truck driver is going to say, well, yeah, uh, uh, of course. And then the next question is, if you don't follow your policies and procedures 100% at every occurrence while you're driving a 80,000 pound truck, then you're endangering the other drivers around you, aren't you? And they're going to say yes. And those yeses are going to lock them in. And then what the reptile plaintiff attorney will do will then subsequently go to the case facts and point out the driver's imperfections and that shows that the driver did not follow the safety rules or the danger rules. Thus, the driver is now trapped, essentially admitting that they endangered everyone. And now the plaintiff attorney has full control, and it, uh, it, it really, really damages the case.